Hey everybody, it's Robert Katniss again. Thank you for checking out this special edition of The Chat Part 2. In our first chat discussion, we talked to three different people who were very instrumental in what we call development of the peer influencer group, the actual positive peer influencer group that has really taken Chatham County by storm and is in multiple schools. We are fortunate today to have four of those positive peer influencers on set with us to chat. And I want to introduce you to all four of them now. First, we have Hannah McElrath from Jenkins High School. Hannah, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. And Dwayne Cargill from New Hampstead. Doing pretty good. How are you? Perfect. Emil Porter from Beach High School. How are you doing? All right, Emil. And Charlie McElrath from Jenkins High School. Hi, good to be here. Good to have you all here. I think the biggest question that I want to ask you first off is, why did you guys choose to be part of the Positive Peer Influencer Group? Um, so the re one of the main reasons I did it is because I noticed that um, not only just in high school, but also in middle school, there's a big problem with peer pressure and people not being able to um, make their right choices on their own, people influence them and all that. So I just wanted to have sort of a choice to be able to impact them and make their them choose the right decisions. Emil, what do you think? Uh, pretty much what he said. I don't, I was selected to be a part of the program, and once I heard about it, it was really like when we did um the training and stuff. I was like, I like it and stuff like that, cause like a lot of my peers and people I know, are like just going bring being like brung up, like growing up, you will see a lot of people doing drugs and then like the way it affect them and how they act and react from it. Like I like I don't really like that. So. Being a part of the program and being able to like prevent people, especially like middle schoolers, because they do it a lot, like they got it by it. Just being able to stop them and like slow them down from like, and just making them look away from doing stuff like that. Like, awesome. Anybody want to jump in? So for me, I know what it's like to be uh, pressured by peer pressure. And I think it's very important and vital to get the news out and help them understand how every decision has consequences. And nowadays, since times have changed so much, even a little decision can lead to potentially death, so it's very important to get the news out. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry about my intrusion real quick. That's okay. I felt that as if I, I too, just as Emiko right here, that I was also selected. However, I also want to be a role model and staple in my community. As an uncle of three and potentially four, I wanted to be role models to them especially. That's fantastic. What's it like talking in front of a group of people? Yeah, so talking in front of a group of people, like, that's easy for me because I've been doing it, like, for so long. And, like, before this, I was in, I was in Elevate, so I go to the uh, elementary school and talk to fifth graders and just teach them about different life traits and college skills. So talk to the middle schoolers, that's pretty easy. It's just, like, that big brother, little sister, big brother, little sister, little brother connection. So being able to talk to them, it was, like, easy and just, like, They'll understand it more, and we'll understand no more explaining it because we were just in these shoes not too long ago. For me, um, I haven't always been a good public speaker. I used to be very shy in front of people, but programs like this have helped me develop um, speaking in front of people, and I'm going to be pretty good at it. So, Yeah, it's awesome, Charlie. You guys want to ch chime in? Yeah, and I say for when it came for me when I was talking to the middle schoolers at our K-8, they were very, very curious when we showed up with our presentation and talked about our drug abuse as well as our good city. So for me, I've always been pretty shy. So um, when I heard about this program, I can relate to it. And I kind of put my shyness aside so I could help other people. And I'm very glad I did it because I can already see the impacts. You can. Yes, sir. How long have you guys been doing this? Um, I just started this year. I was asked to do it. And... Um, I, I haven't really done anything like this before, but it was a good decision. Oh, this is my first time doing it. So this is my first year doing peer influencer, positive peer influencers, but I also prior did peer mediation, so. And I was also starting this year as well. However, I am also part of the advisory board at our school as well. That's fantastic. What have you, what, what could you say you all have learned in the short time that you've been talking in front of your peers uh, about a pretty important topic. What do you guys have learned about it? Um, one of the biggest things I've learned is that there's a big problem, ongoing problem in 
um, our community with middle schoolers and um, high schoolers too with fentanyl and vapes and stuff like that, big peer pressure issues that um, they usually have problems with dealing with on their own. So it's just good to have uh, higher up peers influence them. Uh, I learned I learned a lot. Like even teaching out what we teach them, I learned a lot about drugs. Like I didn't even know like most of the stuff that be going on with like fentanyl and stuff. I didn't even know most of that like went on in Savannah, like inside of county. So just learning and like seeing the different stuff and machines that they use, like that's impactful and to be able to take it back home and then show my siblings and stuff, teach them. And then not only showing our our siblings like the different machines and what we learned during our kickstart as well as our presentations that we not only showed to the middle schoolers and elementary schoolers, but also what we learned. Like for example, how fentanyl could be laced into essentially anything and it's dangerous as of today, right? So one of the things that I've learned is a lot of people are like, they think that it's just in older groups and it's not, it's right in middle schools, even elementary schools. So I feel like, especially as high schoolers, if we can be a good example and go into these middle schools and teach them and show them how important it is to make positive decisions and get on a good track, I think that's very important. When you talk to your peers in this group, and I would assume it covers peer pressure and maybe bullying and then drug awareness, what are they telling you? What, what are you hearing when you do these talks in front of your peers? Um, the biggest thing I'm hearing is that they're definitely more impacted on it than we realize. And they, um, they definitely deal with a lot more than what they are willing to speak on. So just trying to be able to get to them and try to um, see what they're going through to try to help them um, by what you've been through is pretty expressed. Oh, uh, can I ask a question again? Sure, Mel. When you do these talks in front of folks and what are you hearing them tell you afterwards? Like, hey man, that was really cool. Or, you know, I learned a lot. What are they telling you when you do this presentation? So a lot of them, like, in the middle schools. And when I was in middle school, we did, we wasn't worried about like vaping mm -hmm. and smoking and taking edibles and stuff. We was playing with like toys, we was playing with baby days, on the game, going home after school. But I learned that a lot of them, like even down to the sixth grade, it's like a lot of them actually be smoking and doing all types of stuff instead of like going home or just being in school and just being there just like to learn and to be around your peers without be doing drugs and stuff. Cause you don't, like me personally, I don't need no type of job to like have a lot of energy or just to like, just be chilling in life. Like, that's what I be trying to tell them the most. Like, you don't need drugs to boost you up or any of that. You just, just be yourself, just vibe, so. And then not only with drug awareness and essentially suppressing the amount of drugs that are in our county as of today, but after our presentation, especially for me, they had a lot of questions and a lot of them were very interested about fentanyl, mm -hmm. about the two videos about uh, during our presentation on what happened when the officer didn't take the fentanyl and it was only when he was close to it, but he still got affected by it. Right. That stuff had made a statement and essentially told our middle schoolers and tried to educate our middle schoolers, hey, this is what's going on as of today. This is what's inside the world as of today. And we need to be aware of this and we have to help our community stay away from fentanyl, stay away from these bad decisions that are in our community as of today and make good decisions and make positive and well, positive peer influences along with them. That's right. So like he touched on a little bit, I think it's one thing to go in there and talk about um, what like your decisions and the impacts that it can make. But it's another thing when you show them and see that, like, we have one video that we show the kids um, about an officer who didn't take it. He was doing a um, he was doing a normal car uh, inspection that he pulled over, and he didn't even take the fentanyl, but he got too close to it. And when they see that, you can really see them tune in and start paying attention, and that really hits them because they don't understand how strong it is. And I think it's really important to talk about it, and we definitely get a lot of feedback after the, we, they see that video. You know, I think you guys touched upon this, but I'd like you, if you can, to expand on it. Why do you think this 
group or the development of this group is so important? Um, so it's definitely really important because when we go into the schools and we see the issues that um, middle schoolers and like he was also saying, sometimes elementary kids are facing um, inside school or sometimes at home. Um, a lot of people are very unaware of it and bringing this group together sort of um, defines the situation and make, points it out and makes it aware so that we can help and be of assistance to it. Nice. I feel like this group is very important to like the little kids. Like it's important to like it's the group is important for us and for the little kids as well, because as we're teaching them, we're also learning ourselves about what's going on and the different dangers, and then uh, also teaching them. You always like I always use real life scenarios from stuff that I've been in or just like stuff that I've seen go around growing up. So I feel like being able to connect with them and being able to like talk to them to like scare them like just like scare them from even thinking about or attempting to do any type of drugs so i feel like it's very important and then not only to what we said also being role models in their lives as well as when they get to our stage of life when they're also high schoolers and they're going into high school and they're seeing us mm -hmm. they can also become positive peer influencers and seeing that when doing the presentations I feel as if that's mainly important for me, especially when you know as a fact that the things that you're doing as of today and the actions that you do can lead to more and better futures and help kids that, yes, maybe, they, maybe they're going doing things correct as of right now. Maybe they're having a nice life right now, but you may not know when it could go wrong. But it's better to prepare for the times that are worse. It's better to prepare for the times that you don't know of so then you can have a better future and a positive attitude. So I think this is really important because just because you make a bad decision that doesn't make you a bad kid, you can be a really good kid and be peer pressured and want to fit in and you could just trying to do that and that little decision that you make could lead to very worse things and can potentially even lead to death in these days. So I think it's very important that we get to go in there and they can relate to us as um, students that are also still in school and that are faced with the same problems. Um, so I think it's really important that we're still in school and they can relate to us. I would venture to say that your family is pretty proud of you guys knowing that you guys are doing this, right? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. What do you hope is the, the number one message when you get up and you talk to a group of students, what do you want them to take away from it? What's the most important thing? Um, the most important thing is to make the positive choices. Um, it's okay to say no. Use um, certain methods to um, re resist peer pressure and just mainly just choose the right choices. The most important thing I feel like they should leave with is learning to like, oh, don't be scared to say no. Don't be scared to like turn your back away. And also don't be scared to like just tell people like that's not that's not cool, but that's not what you're supposed to be doing. And also, I try to like when I'm talking to them to make sure that they understand like the seriousness and the importance and the dangers of even like indulging in any type of like drugs or just engaging in any type of like letting your friends peer pressure you to do the wrong thing. You know that like that could lead that could like turn your whole life around. Like you have a good straight path. The next thing you know, you could be dead or so in prison because of the decisions you made or your choices. Does that decisions matter? Especially deciding whether or not if next the next day you go into school and sometimes you have to decide whether or not if you're gonna if your friend wants you to skip school or not. And just as he said, you have options like cold shoulder, a sort of refusal and excuse to essentially get away from those situations, the bad negative and go into the more positive field of life where you don't have to worry and be stressed about the near future when when we come to your classroom you can have confidence in yourself knowing that you will be learning something new that can help your future and possibly go to your parents one day and help them in the future as well yeah so yeah i think the most important thing that i want them to take away from it is how um little fentanyl and how little substance can potentially kill you and that every decision that they make has consequences, good or bad, and to make sure they make the right one. 
Awesome. PPI, Positive Peer Influencers. I have a feeling we're going to hear a lot about these, this group and the work that you all do, the great work that you all do and the messages that you get to those who need to hear it. So my last question to you all is this, um, for people who are going to see this, whether it be parents or guardians or aunts or uncles, grandparents, students, what message do you want to really drive home to them about what you all do? Um, just say no, make the right sort, make the right choices and, um, don't be peer pressured. Go to somebody you can trust. I would say always, if you know it's wrong, don't do it. If that's not something you, you know you don't do or you don't like doing, don't be scared to push them away and say no. And then always make sure you make the right decision, no matter where you at or which point you at in life. Just always make the right decisions. And always, if you know it's bad and it's going to lead you a bad way, say no. So especially for parents, um, please know what we um, as students, especially like no matter what age, have to face these days because it's very different and it's a lot more serious. And just to be there for your kids, make sure that they know that um, they can come to you and that their decisions have consequences and just to know that um, essentially that you're there for them and they can make the right choice and get on the right path. And as well as being brave, brave in your knowledge, brave in what you are learning, having the courage to make better decisions, make positive choices. And especially when we were in our presentation, learn the ways you can make positive choices. Be brave in what you're learning. Be brave that you are still alive. Be brave in what you have as of today and what you may have in the future. You all realize that you guys are rock stars, aren't you? <laughs> don't you? Thank you. You're rising rock stars that have a message that people need to hear and you're getting that message out there. And I have a feeling that we are going to hear a lot more about the Positive Peer Influencer Group. I want to thank you, Charlie, Emil, Hannah, Dwayne. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this and doing what you do and getting your message out there. And hopefully if it one person listens to what you all have to say, you're on the right track. So that's going to wrap this special edition up of the chat. I want to thank all of our panelists today, and we will see you next time on the chat.